Okay, we're live. Hi. Okay, hi guys. Hip we are going to do a great job. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Can you hear us okay? Yeah, it should be. Who is this? Do I have a smart? Marek, I saw. Yeah, Marek and uh, Julian. Oh. But let, me, let me make sure that they actually can see before we get too excited. Just a second. Do they see? Like, I don't see anything. Are you sure you're your not family and, uh, uh, So mom, I think, will be. Um, she probably comes at like five. No, no, no. She's um, I mean, she's a
No, I um, I invited all of my contacts to the uh, to the hangout on air. I might too. Okay. Oh, did it need an invitation? I just posted it. I think it's the same. I'm not sure. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, M says hi. Good luck. Who's that? <laughs> <laughs> we had a trouble. We had a trouble. Uh, M gave you a face. <laughs> اسماء أندرو مخبل مجنون أنا المخبل مجنون You can sit wherever you want. I'm going to be back here managing the managing. You are excited. I am excited. I'm so excited I could pee. <laughs> and I might pee. Let's look at it. I told you he's crazy. He's awesome. No, they don't know about this, so they're like, oh, I know, they probably are. Right? No one's talking to you. They can just stream it, right? Yeah. According to this, 85 professors are watching. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> That's a lot. Yeah. Oh, someone just dropped out. <laughs> oh, no, we're back up to four viewers. That's good. Uh, that's good. I'm going to put, put it on Facebook using Oh my god. Obama is watching you. Probably. Oh, I'm not telling him that. Yeah, say has this after all. Oh my god, this is amazing. Oh. Yeah, that's right. Hey, hey, it's good to see you. See you, man. Yeah. I'm uh, managing screen. Yeah, you can have three viewers right now. I have viewers. Oh, no, I have the cameras. Oh, got it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 
you know, these guys. They're actually working for the bomb. And they're really yes. using the code. <laughs> I don't know if you're interested or if it's kind of like um, it's fast yeah. project. Yeah. Uh, it's like yeah. 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 Oh, they're, they're all here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't actually know if it's empty or isn't it? It will come to time. The room will be empty. That's what hundreds of people. That's what watch. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's that's awesome. Awesome. yeah. or in their <laughs> offices. It's quite disconcerting. Yeah. No, I'm in a place where you have to see each other. Yeah, it's like I'm not even saying. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's the area. Yeah, yeah. 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 Mr. Savage. Yes. Korean. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I cut it This live stream. Now we're down to six minutes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they left. Oh, now we're done. Some of you may know that in 
Rob Miller's group the system called Chickenfoot involved with generating code. So we've got Chickenfoot, we've got Code Monkey, we've got these atavistic things that are creating code. I'm looking forward to Octopus, the thing that breaks <laughs> parallel code in parallel if we come to the time. <laughs> we'll see. That's a good piece of stuff. Yeah, something like that. In the meantime, Andrew. Thank you, Randy. Alright, so yes, Code Monkey. Smart whiteboard system that converses about code. Before I start, I will also use this opportunity to tell you the double meaning in the name, because como, as some of you know, is Spanish for how, and this is a system that has a conversation and asks questions. Uh, how is used like what is used in English. You say something, you're like what? In Spanish it's como. So double meaning to the name. Alright, on to the rest. The motivation for this system is that often uh, engineers walk up to a whiteboard and they discuss some sort of a problem. And they draw and they talk and the whiteboard acts very much as just a passive medium. It's there to take the strokes and display it. They come to a solution, they disperse and they solve the problem. Wouldn't it be nice if the whiteboard actually played an active role in that conversation? Maybe made some suggestions ask questions, even if only to a limited degree, that would certainly be useful. Well, Como is my early version of that vision. So I'm about to show you a video of Como in action with a user who has a linked list reversal in mind and wants to generate code with, uh, let me rephrase that, wants to talk with Como about a linked list reversal and then Como will generate code and play through it. This is a view of the screen you're going to be seeing, primarily, throughout the video. Um, note that the center part is a canvas where the user draws. The part is where uh, Como displays the last thing it heard. And the top part is a status message. The code will pop up there once the time comes. Do you know what a linked list is? No. <laughs> <laughs> we all have to start somewhere. <laughs> How do you handle this case? Like this. Okay. How do you handle this case? Do nothing. Okay. How do you handle this case? Do nothing. Okay. I think I understand. Generate code. I will try. <laughs> Animate the code. Okay.
generate a structure with five nodes. Animate the code. Okay. So this was an example of a user interacting with Como, having a conversation about a single implicit reversal, getting the interaction enough to be able to generate code and have the user verify or, or yeah, verify for themselves as best they can that the code seems correct. This is only one. This is only one of the 50 manipulations on eight data structures that Como uh, In this talk, I'm going to tell you what those are and how Como does it. But first, let me briefly go over my contributions. So the first contribution, as you may have guessed, is this system I implemented, Como, the code bucket. The next uh, major contribution is an observational user study where I had Groups of people discuss a linked list reversal and a binary tree rotation so that I could model the interaction that Como engages in after real human human interactions. The final contribution is the algorithm that drives Como's question generation and interaction management, which I call a mixed initiative code generation framework. So, in this talk, we'll do related work first. Then I'll talk a little bit about Como at a high level. This will be uh, an explanation of those 50 manipulations on eight structures. I will then talk about the observational user study's six findings that helped guide Como. Then I'll talk about the storyboard programming tool, which is the software that Como uses to synthesize code in the, in the background. Finally, well, not finally. Fifth, I'll go into the functionality of Como, the nitty gritty about exactly how it does what it does. And then I'll wrap up with some future work, some extensions that might be useful to Como, and I'll summarize my findings. So, the major springboard for this work was work that was done by Aaron Adler, also under Randy, in our group, uh, a system called MIDOS. Um, this system, is, again, a symmetric multimodal system. Let me explain what that means briefly. It's multimodal in the sense that it uses multiple modes of input. So in this case, speech and sketch. You talk to it, you draw on it, just like the thought. And that multimodality is symmetric because everything that is an input is also an output. So the system draws and talks back, just like the problem. The foreknowledge of the system, the pre-programmed knowledge, is on par with Como's. This system only knows about physical objects. The goal of the system is to engage in a symmetric multimodal interaction with the user, uh, understand, in this case, some Rube Goldberg device, and then simulate it for the user. The differences arise both in the domain, as may have become apparent just now, and also in the interactivity. Um, Aaron's work focused a lot on having speech and sketch mutually disambiguate one another. So not only do you say when the system asks, what does this do, you not only say, oh, it rises, but you can also draw an arrow up. My system differs in that, in that it does not do this mutual disambiguation. It does, however, attempt to abstract the task of coding so that we only look at input and output states and then the system is able to sort of fill in the gaps as well. The next major system uh, is CS Tutor. So this is a system where you can draw 
uh, rudimentary data structure manipulations here, the code is generated uh, one line at a time. So here the domain is very similar. Uh, however, the differences arise in both the method of code generation, so in this case we'll see that this up here, it's a little small, so I'll read it for you, head.next is assigned temp. So the user just drew a line here. So line by line, this allows a student to go through and learn the abstraction between, oh, when I draw a line across here, that is equivalent to this line of code. Um, the foreknowledge is, uh, so that's one, um, that's one major difference. The code generation works differently. As the name suggests, it's a teacher instead of Como, which is a student that tries to learn something from you. The foreknowledge is far higher. It knows about several structures a priori. And the modes of interaction are actually just a mode of interaction, limited to sketch. So. Como, on the other hand, also uses this bidirectional speech and sketch, or symmetric multimodal interface. Um, uses edit editable digital ink and uses a reasonable vocabulary, which I will explain a little bit more when I talk about the user study. The code generation framework, or the algorithm behind what drives Como, can be broken down into these six high-level phases. The user, or Como, has to draw examples that are then demonstrated to the system by the user. Um, the user answers example questions, which they can either draw themselves, or again, the system brings up. Um, the user needs to draw a general structure. You saw that at the, the basically very beginning of the video. Uh, the system generates code and examples to animate that code up so that the user can convince themselves that the code is correct. So these are the eight structures that Como is able to converse about. Stack, linked list, ordered linked list, queue, Double linked list, ordered, binary tree, binary search tree. The 50 manipulations include three on a stack, nine on a linked list, and six on an ordered linked list. And then analogously with the next 18, Three on a cube, nine, six. Yeah? So what do you mean when you say it handles? That's a good question. Um, it, um, it is able to engage in an interaction with the user about one of these 50. I'm only 36 through, but one of these 50. And at the end of that interaction, uh, you will have functioning C code that does that manipulation. That's what it means by hand. Six binary tree rotations, and the same six on a binary search tree, along with a find min and find max. So those are the 50 manipulations. There are some simplifying assumptions that Como makes in order to make all these 50 work. The first is that there is only one type of node. So a linked list append. The kind of node being appended is the same as already exists in the node, uh, in the list. And then you can only, in the case of a linked list append again, append one node to it. You can't append the whole list to the list. So that makes the manipulations a bit simpler. There's also something I noticed about how similar the manipulations are to one another. So 50 is a large number, but Let's think about two of those manipulations, a stack push and a linked list prepend. How does a stack push proceed? We start with a stack, and we start with a node to add. And all we do, we click and drag one pointer up here, so we reassign one, two pointers. And then we have pushed a node onto the stack. Well, what is a linked list prepend? You reassign that pointer, and you reassign that pointer. It is extremely similar. Along a slightly different dimension, if we compare an ordered doubly linked list reversal with just a linked list reversal, well, here we have an ordered doubly linked list reversal. Uh, sorry, this is an ordered doubly linked list. To reverse it, we move eight pointers. Boom, reversed. 
For a linked list, we remove half as many. Sorry, we move half as many. So if Como can handle, again by that definition, this doubly linked list reversal, then it can certainly handle a reversal that consists of a subset of those reassignments. So now we can start to see that the 50 become easier to do when they are so similar and they fall into these similarity classes. Let me be very specific now. This is the definition of a similarity class. Notice the subtlety here. It's, uh, it is a set of IO states. This may not be intuitive, but it will become clear why input-output or output-input end up being similar enough that if Como can handle the one, it can handle the other. The reason is that the back end works this way. I'll talk about that when I talk about the back end. Suffice it to say, let me, let me divide my 50 manipulations now into the six similarity classes they happen to fall into. So along the top, I have these six manipulations. I've omitted the trees for now because they're sort of in a class of their own. And let's start with push pop pull, the simplest manipulations I have. Well, as you saw a couple slides ago, push is very much like linked list prepend. Pop and pull have the same analogies. Popping is removing the first, and polling is just finding the first. Similarly, a queue has an NQ, a DQ, and a peak. It has twice as many uh, pointers as a stack does. So if we can do this guy, we can do those guys. Same similarity class. And the same similarity here can be applied to double linked lists. Now, this assignment here assumes that we are, let me get this right, NQing into the back of the list and DQing or peaking from the front of the list. Since it's a doubly linked list, we can do both, and they are similar. So we can add those three there too. Now, if we want to add order, we think about an ordered linked list. The difference between a linked list and an ordered linked list is the order. So instead of talking about the first and the last element, we talk about the minimum and the maximum element. So we can remove min and remove max, assuming that the list starts with the smallest element and ends with the largest. If it were the other way, we would switch those two. But that's fine. Same for an ordered double linked list. As mentioned previously, reverses are reverses. If we can do the most complicated in this row, we can do the least complicated. And by the same argument, we can do inserts and deletes, ordered inserts, yeah, ordered inserts, period, bad inflection. And remove less and remove max are in their own uh, similarity class because these guys differ from those guys because we have to loop to the end of the list. But they're similar to each other, just like find last and max are similar. And append is, has no similarity, no other similar thing. All right, so I said there were six of these. And this is far more than six. Let's think about what kinds of lines we can remove, what kinds of groups we can combine. Pop and pull. What's the difference? Well, a pop is a pull followed by a remove, right? You, you pull that element, then you remove it. So actually, if you can do a pop, pop you can do a pull. All right, there goes that line. This holds true for all of them. And by the same argument, we can get rid of the remove last, uh, find last line. Now, because of the definition of similarity classes, which again results from the way that the storyboard programming tool works, we can also remove the differences between push and pop, or find last and hand, or insert key. So now suddenly in this table, we have five similarity classes. and I've forgotten, or forgotten. I have not yet added the tree, the tree uh, manipulations. So we'll add those. We have six rotations, another six rotations, and those are in their own class. And then the find min max is just like a, a find last. You loop to one side or the other and you return it. All right. So this is Como at a high level. This is what it can do. Now let's talk about the user study I performed to try to uh, determine exactly how the interaction with Como should be, how it should look. 
What I did was I took 10 pairs of students, a teacher, 10 pairs of subjects, I should say, because I called one a teacher and one a student. They, they stood at a whiteboard, and I asked them, without interfering at all, to discuss a linguist reversal and a, a tree rotation, and then just see what kinds of things I found. Notice from the demographics here that, as one might expect, the teachers were geeks and math majors, and the students were not. So this ended up being all of the 10 students' first experience with data structure manipulations. It really was the first time they had ever seen these things. So what did I find? There are six findings in this study that affected how Como works. The first is that subjects tended to try to edit simpler structures in place. That is to say, instead of drawing a new structure next to the original structure, reflecting the change that the manipulation enacted, they would erase and redraw sub-elements. So what does Como do? Como uses the editable digital ink. There is no need to redraw the entire thing. Teachers often started their interactions by asking the student, do you know what a link list is? Do you know what a binary search tool is? Presumably, had they said yes, then they could have skipped that part. They all said no. So what Como does is it remembers the names of manipulations. You saw at the beginning of the video. The first thing the user asked was, do you know what a link list is? No. Teachers describe before and after states to describe the manipulation in all but one pairing. In that pairing, the teacher went through the details of how memory management works and computer architecture and why the manipulation <laughs> must go the way it does. So with Como, we tend to use input and output states. However, it does keep track of every intermediate state as the interaction proceeds. As it turns out, as you'll see, uh, the storyboard programming tool, the code generation tool, only needs the input and the output states. Fourth. Students had, well, let me not say it that way. Students mimic teachers' visual vocabularies. They had never seen them before. They had no trouble understanding them. For humans, it seems to be very easy to, to interact with manipulation. So Como recognizes, Como sets and recognizes the common visual uh, trees. Boxes and circles, I'll show you that more exactly later. Next, an uh, unexpected finding was that a specific shorthand was used of, of a other structure, but in drawing it, they would omit the heads of arrows and the outlines of notes. The students, again, who had never seen this stuff before, had no trouble understanding exactly what they meant. The geometry of the sketch remained the same, and that seemed to be enough to disambiguate for them. So, Como uses this knowledge by when you draw on Como a structure where each node contains more than one node, uh, sorry, more than one uh, pointer, it takes note of the direction that was drawn in, and it classifies a new pointer as the correct pointer, pre or next, based on the direction that all the other pre or next. <laughs> the final finding is that the conversation was mixed initiative. This is not a huge finding. The students asked questions, so they initiated little interactions with the teachers. The teachers explained things, so they initiated interactions with the students. Como also engaged in a mixed initiative interaction. The user can walk up to the board and initiate it, and Como asks questions. So. I was promising for so long to talk about the storyboard programming tool. Here's what it is. It is a code synthesis system that was made by the people in the audience, actually. So Rashad, not Rashad. Rashad made it. Um, the idea behind it is we want to take a, uh, sorry, a data structure like this, and we want to describe it very abstractly, conceptually rather, as in text. Head points to A, A dot X points to B, and so on. We want to label that as the input state of the manipulation of scenario one. And the output state is that it points to D, and D next to C, and so on. We put a bunch of these uh, scenarios together, 
and we add something called the control flow graph, which is an outline of the code. So here you can see there is the head node, which is part of the structure, temporary nodes, uh, sorry, temporary pointers, which you'll need, and then you ask the SPT synthesize one line here, the conditional here, five lines here. You run it, it produces code, and it is guaranteed to work on all of these provided scenarios. So, this is a great tool. It abstracts the coding task to be this example input output based thing. It solves a lot of the problem for Coma. There are five things that Coma was able to improve upon here. The first being that with Coma you don't need textual input. Actually, let me switch straight here. Let me go like this. SPT requires textual input. Como engages in this conversation-like interaction. SPT's user needs to know to, for example, give a scenario with four nodes, with one node, and with zero nodes, so that the correct code will, will be produced, be synthesized. Uh, Como asks about specific examples, thereby guiding the user to a correct solution. SPT requires this control flow graph, which is a large step on the way toward solving the problem of what the code is, saying there's one line and five lines. Homo selects a CFG for the user, so in the video you notice no CFG input. SPT synthesizes something called dead code. Dead code is stuff that has no, uh, not function, no effects. So for example, head is assigned head, never does anything. We don't need those. Como does a simple cleanup on those. With, uh, yeah, does a simple cleanup. And finally, uh, SPT requires that for you to verify that the code works, you need to do some <coughs> manual testing. You need to make another test suite or something. Um, Como animates the code and generates these concrete structures that you can test the code on so that you can be satisfied that the code works on not just what you provided us. So now I'm going to get into the meat <coughs> code. This is how Como does things. I'm going to start by briefly touching on how the steps recognition works and how Como goes from strokes to a data structure that is a head pointing at four nodes. Then I'm going to get into details about this algorithm that drives Como, the mixed initiative code generation framework. And I'm going to get into details about the three production rules that Como uses to generate questions for all 50 of the manipulations. Uh, finally, I'm going to talk about how Como interfaces with SPT. Here we go. So these are the symbols that Como recognizes. I use off-the-shelf, or I should say, Como uses off-the-shelf sketch recognition libraries to convert strokes into one of these symbols. A label, a constraint, a null symbol, Something called a concrete node in code synthesis, which is a node that is a node, as opposed to a summary node, which is this form of repetition. It represents multiple nodes. Uh, Como supports, supports both of these visual vocabularies, the one commonly used with lists and the one commonly used with trees. And finally, a pointer. So this is what Como's sketch recognition recognizes. Combine those all together. And then the task becomes, how do we recognize this tree, for example, as a tree that root points to that has nodes A through D in it? The answer is, Como uses a simple depth-first search algorithm. Start at root and do a depth-first search, marking nodes as you go. So at the end of this algorithm, you'll find A through D belong to root. If there are two, well, you start at head. A through D belong to head. The algorithm needs to terminate at the null symbol because null is a value, it's not part of the structure. And add, you go through, you get X. So A through D belong to head, X belongs to add. For the rest of the talk, I'm going to refer to this big structure as the main structure. And I'm going to refer to this extra node to be added or removed or pulled as the auxiliary structure. That distinction will become uh, the importance of that distinction will become apparent in just a bit. So finally, what if we have two pointers that point to the same structure, so to speak? You do the algorithm here, A through D belong to head, O, but they also belong to tail. Well, it's the same set of nodes, so this is one structure with two pointers containing four nodes. 
All right. So now Homo has an abstraction of what the sketch looks like in terms of data structures with numbers of nodes and, and labels on their pointers. How does it guide the interaction with this knowledge? It consists of the mixed initiative code generation framework consists of five phases. The first of which is the user initiating it. How does the user initiate it? It can do one of uh, he can do one of these three three things. Do you know what a linked list is? You heard in the video. In the video, the system said no. So again, it waited for the user to initiate the interaction. The user then went straight to the general structure definition. However, the user could have drawn four, a structure with four nodes and reversed them. Next, Como asks questions. These are the production rules that Como uses to add figure out what the questions are for this manipulation, wherever this manipulation is. I'm going to go into more detail about this in the very next slide. I'll, I'll give you a look at exactly what that says. Next, Como converts the interaction that it has had, all the scenarios, into the input format for SPT, selects a CFG, runs SPT, and then cleans the code that comes out and displays it to the after that, Como animates the code, and the user can have Como generate examples to test the code on further. There is a case, for example, in a linked list find last. If you give it a 4 and a 1 and a 0 list, what will happen when you test it on the 5 list sometimes is it will return the fourth node, because it will work on all the input examples, but not on an unseen example. So what you can do is you can correct that fifth example, uh, five list, and rerun SPT. Then you'll get correct code. So notice I'm not making any claims about this being the end all for um, if you do this, you will get correct code. There still is some reliance upon the user to make sure for themselves. This is merely a tool to help the user get there faster. So those questions. The first one you saw was the general structure. Homo will ask about the general structure, and it will expect both uh, an outline, if you will, and an inductive definition for the for the repetition symbol. This is what it this is what it expects for lists, and this is what it expects for trees. Notice a slightly different vocabulary. The next rule is to ask about structures with four nodes, one node, and zero nodes. This is sort of, well, here you go. You saw this in the video, 410. If there are multiple structures, so if there's an auxiliary structure, this rule gets changed slightly to be 410 for the main structure and 1 and 0 nodes for the auxiliary structure. So this case, this case, these, and these. Finally, when it comes to ordered structures, binary search trees, and in this case, a double linked list, Homo will also ask a question about one node and one node when the main structure's node is less than the auxiliary structure's node and when it is greater than the auxiliary structure. So these are the questions Homo asks, or rather, these are the production rules that Como uses to generate the questions for all 50 manipulations that it can handle. The way it selects a control flow graph is it has a default one. Notice this is very similar to what you saw in my slide about SPT. I, Como, inserts the pointers, inserts temp pointers, and makes sure there's at least two. The manipulations need at least two. Do three lines, do a traditional, do five lines, and then do three lines with an optional if statement in front. This CFG was selected because it works for all the manipulations except one. The W-linked list insert requires slightly more lines of code. So if a run fails, we add or we turn the three into six, and then we rerun, and then it works. So here is the input to SPT. Yes. Why not just use the second one all the time? Because it takes way longer. The CFG, so from a technical point of view, 
the CFG serves to constrain the search space of possible code that could get the scenarios from their input state to their output state. And if you give it more leeway, not only does it take longer, but in some cases it may even be incorrect because you're giving it too much leeway. So here we see the input from uh, here we see the input given to SPT in the video. This is the actual input. Notice a couple things. Notice firstly that scenario two is the first scenario. Why is that? Well, the zeroth and first canvases with a general list description. Second, notice that it's not a.next or b.next, it's pointer zero. It was never labeled. Como had to select the default uh, name for these pointers, and so it selected pointer zero. Finally, notice that the CFG is the default CFG. Head was inserted and two temp pointers were added. So, this is given to SPT, SPT runs, and it produces this code. Notice there's some dead code. Uh, temp2 is assigned temp2, temp1 is assigned temp1. If false, do that. If head is not equal to head, never true, do that. So Como cleans it up and presented this to the user, and that's what you saw played through in the video. Yeah. Are you actually identifying the dead code, is it just like or is there something it's, it's a regular expression, so it's pretty simple. So it's looking for certain predictable types of that code. That's right. It's because, so one might naively, for example, here's, here's some little bit of trickery, if you will. Um, one might, for example, say, well, if some string is assigned some string and this string is the same as that string, then just delete it. But what if it's head.next is assigned head.next head or something? Is that right? Oh, it might be wrong. Doing this on my feet. Very good example. Head is assigned. Oh, I'm sorry. Erase that. You might say that you know if head is assigned one thing and then head is assigned another thing, we'll just assign it to the second thing and you're fine, right? But what if it's head is assigned head dot next? Head is assigned head dot next. Ah, it becomes tricky, right? I think in the uh, in the extreme, in terms of getting rid of all dead code, this is on par with the whole So. Presumably, SPT could actually just not generate these bit signals. Presumably, yes. Presumably, yeah. Because it might actually have better knowledge of what's going on. Right. It doesn't, so I do. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, SPT generates code. Como cleans it. Como plays it and adds any of the temporary pointers. So, one final thing about interfacing with SPT. Um, to interface, to describe an ordered structure to SPT. So let's say here we have a doubly linked list and we want to insert this node based on the constraint that A is less than B. The user has decided that the front of the list should be small and the back of the list should be large. So they click and drag the pointers to be in this configuration. Now the list is inserted. I'm sorry, now the node is inserted. The changes to SPT are seen here. These two lines are what you would expect. These two are what you would expect. A, dot A is less than B. SPT needs concrete values, so it finds some. Como, rather, finds some. And then Como also says, I have selected val to be a value. So then Como will, will sorry, SPT will also search the space of binary comparators uh, relating to val. So that's the meat and bones of functionality. There are two other little things that Como can do. You can name the pointers by drawing on them. This is not shown in the video. And you can label the structure or the manipulation by saying, this is a linked list reversal, or this is a reversal, or this is a linked list, or any of the names that Como has. There you go. I told you how it recognizes a sketch. I told you how it thinks about it how it structures the interaction, how it forms the questions it asks, how it interfaces with SPT, and what it does with the code when it gets it. So now let's talk about future directions. First, Homo doesn't handle recursion. The reason for this is that SPT doesn't either. What would need to happen for Como to handle recursion 
is we would have to run a user study and see how people think about recursion, how they draw it, and then also see how the code uh, code synthesis system in the background, in this case SPT, maybe a different one, uh, what kind of information it needs about that manipulation. Composition is a similar problem. Instead of recursing the same function, imagine coding an AVL tree. What that consists of is first doing a binary search tree insert, then doing some comparisons on the depths of branches to determine which of those six rotations needs to happen to balance the tree, if any. Instead of describing all of that, it would be nice to be able to say, uh, I'm going to do a BST insert, OK? Now, because of this, again, we'd have to figure out exactly how that interaction would look. Intermediate states are, is the idea of, remember I told you that in the user study, people generally talked about input output states. However, there was that instance of someone going through the detailed manipulation. What if? those intermediate states in that manipulation could be used by the back-end code synthesis system and maybe, again, further call the search space to speed up time. This might allow more and more complex manipulations to be synthesized in real time. An under-constrained system is one where multiple functionally different pieces of code will do the same thing given the constraints. A good example of this is the linked list of uh, find last. That I mentioned. If I give it a 0, a 1, and a 4, it may just find the 0 and the 1 or the fourth element and not actually find the last element. There were obviously two separate kinds of code that could have done that. It would be nice to have Como work more tightly with the back end so that the question could be asked to disambiguate which do you mean between these two. On the other side of that problem is when the system is over constrained and there's nothing that can do all of these scenarios. In which case, again, a disambiguating question needs to be asked. Well, you said x over here and you said y over there, which is it? More fully on the Como side, some things that could be improved are the visual syntax checking of Como. Right now it assumes that the user knows what he's doing. That may not be the case. If the user forgets to draw a pre-pointer, for example, then Homo should ask. On the other hand, some of these structures have little shorthands. For example, not drawing the pointers at leaf nodes on binary search trees or binary trees of any kind. If a pointer is missing from one of those nodes, then that usually means that it's assigned to null. It would be nice if Homo could be intelligent enough to disambiguate that. Finally, well, not finally, I keep saying finally. There was one final uh, observation from the user study that I didn't mention because it didn't affect Como at all. And that observation <coughs> was that there was a teacher who was trying to ask the student, do you know what a binary tree is? The student couldn't understand him. He was not a native speaker. And, sh and she understood him to be saying, do you know what a binary three is? They went back and forth a little bit, couldn't be cleared up verbally. So he just drew a biological tree cartoon on the board and a binary tree. He said, have you seen one? <laughs> <laughs> no, she did not. <laughs> so it would be neat if Como could do some more advanced parsing to recognize that, oh, I've seen this structure before, actually, and understand these kinds of visual questions. Finally, uh, more structures and manipulations. I don't know which ones would be next. This would take some research, but I feel like there's a good next step to improve, uh, increasing that number 50 to be a higher number. So, that said, contributions. What I've presented to you today are these observations from the user study. Simpler structures were not copied. Sometimes they were edited in place. And teachers always probed their students. Not always. I'm in a scientific context. Teachers often probe their students' knowledge before diving into an explanation by asking. And they tended to stick to before and after states. That visual vocabularies are easily learned by, this, by complete novices. That teachers use this shorthand. That conversations were mixed initiative. And this drawn question observation. 
Next, I implemented Chrome, this system that is able to have a conversation-like interaction with its user that results in functioning C code about these 50 manipulations on a data structure. And finally, the mixed initiative code generation framework that structures the interaction and that improves upon using text-based code synthesis alone by removing dead code, engaging in a more human-like interaction, asking questions, and handling the interface to the, in this case, storyboard programming tool, and aiding the user in testing this with animations. Oh, there we go. Aiding the user in testing the code with that. Right. Those are my three. I have to thank Randy, of course. He dragged me kicking and screaming, I have to admit, every now and then. But mm -hmm. thank you, Randy. I would not be the man today if it weren't for you. I thank my committee who have helped me, uh, both in life and uh, with good suggestions along the way. My whole research group, most of whom have already graduated, so they're not here. <laughs> um, my wife, Ashley, who supported me throughout. My friends and family, hi guys! <laughs> and then the Agile Robotics group and Seth. Let's draw 
A, B, C, and E, right? A is less than, oh, 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 I've got it. <laughs> so, I don't know, I lost it. Tell us how you almost had it. So I almost got it because the, the sort of behind the scenes we're calling these really constraints. This is really constraints, but constraints is what I'm calling this like A is less than B, the thing that makes a uh, linked list in order, right? Is the way the call would use that is, okay, so A is less than B, and A is connected to B by this thing called next, and so, okay, next has this relation across it. Now, if we have a left and a right, say, we have P, then um, that would mean that, oh, less than, less than, so if we go across A, then that means we have to go less than or greater than, right? And if we go across right, then it's also a greater than. Maybe it should work. I don't know. I don't know. That's why I almost had it. So maybe it would assign these, maybe it would assign these, uh, it would make this relationship between the constraint and the pointer and my work. But I would expect it to work like that. Another way to view the same question. So uh, there, there are many, this system has many different pieces. Some of these pieces are fully algorithmic and they're complete. Other pieces of the system involve some heuristics or rules of thumb. And presumably those are the ones where you introduce a new data structure. Maybe the old rules of thumb would no longer apply to that data structure. That's right. So, so what, are, what are the places where you have some of these rules of thumb that, that maybe wouldn't apply are you, with a new data structure? Are you asking me to list them or yeah. to call the set? Okay, to list them. Ooh. Man, there's a few. Um, okay. Steps. So, for example, you show the code skeleton, right? Where you say, you know, we use this one, and if this one doesn't work, we use this one. And we know that works for all our users. But, but, you know, that's a rule of thumb, and presumably you introduce yet another data structure, and those two would not be enough. Some third one, right? Possibly, you might need a new corner kit. Possibly. Yeah, really nothing comes to mind. It's a good question, but the way that I proceeded in making the 50 work is really, because it is a, you know, I said that this step would be a simple block diagram, but each of those pieces is so complicated that generally, to get the next couple working, I try them and I see where it fails. And then I discover something about the system or, or you know, one of these heuristics. So I really can't, I really can't think of it any, yeah, I can't predict how that would, that test run would go. Let me ask a question in a different area. So, uh, uh, what uh, what the code synthesis part of the system expects are input, output, for example, pairs, right? Plus the system skeleton, CFG. It, it looks like a fortunate that uh, for the 50 manipulations that we do right now, basically the same. I was just wondering, comparing that with the observational setting with how humans actually teach other humans, um, did you see teachers providing input output example pairs, or did you see teachers demonstrating the actual steps of an algorithm to do with this person? So I saw nine of the pairs focused only on the input output states. The, you know, here is this, and then, you know, you reassign things such that it looks like this at the end. No mention of order of operations or anything. In the one case where I saw the very detailed manipulation, um, it was revealed to me in the, the exit surveys that they knew each other, the two. Didn't know that they were coming together, but they knew each other. And the teacher knew that the student wanted to be a CS major. So he went through the extra effort of explaining to him, well, here is how you do all this. So, it would it would suggest that if you're not a CS person, then you're using for output states. Manipulation is defined by
most of the time on the white. The input example is fixed and static and then uh, and read only and drawing and using output example. One erasing pointers. Since there is a loop there. Yeah. If you're going and changing pointers in a four element list, yeah. you're changing four different things in sequence. Right. You're not just blasting up, oh, here's the reverse list, there's right. the output. Um, so I guess my question is um, whether it really feels, whether, whether uh, it would feel more natural for people to be doing this kind of demonstration rather than just throwing up complex output, and whether you think Homo needs to get these watch demonstrations, not just looking at output. So Homo does. So there's sort of two answers here. On the one hand, Homo does look at the demonstration. It's just it's never used, and so it kind of ends there. It's never used by the people. However, on the point of the user study, it's a good point about, well, you know, they, they methodically went one after the next, and reverse the errors. However, so two things. Number one, when you see this done on the whiteboard by non-experts, when I saw this done, I should say, can't tell. When I saw this done on the whiteboard by these non-experts, um, at every intermediate state where there was no missing pointer, so there were like in this four list, there were four pointers and four nodes, uh, in every intermediate state, one of those nodes had two pointers. Because it wasn't like, remove this, and then draw it over here. No, no, no. It was, you know, remove this and reverse the direction. So then this would have two pointers, and then, oh, and then this would have two pointers, and then this. So it wasn't really like a... They were illegal in immediate states. Yeah, very illegal. And how else would you do it, right? Whatever very illegal you do. <laughs> how else would you do it, right? Um, it's not like you can erase and read all of them at the same time. It's just a matter of, well, i got to do one and then the next, right? And some of them just erase all of them and read through all of them. Actually, I was thinking about that, what you just said, and how to change it all at once. Part of the sequential activity of changing the data structure is enforced by the technology that has at hand, right. namely the marker and an eraser. And if it were, in fact, electronic ink, and there was a select, 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 reverse, you could put them all at once. Right. So we just have to be a little careful about the lessons we read out of this, because some of it's going to be dependent about the technology they have to do it. Do the draw. What I was trying to get at, yeah. One way to, to look at it is, is the order in which they're going and flipping these things actually match the order given the algorithm for us to come back in order? Well, it's usually left to right, they did. I mean, for the reversal cases, they go left to right. I'm, I'm, you know, this is off the top of my head. I didn't double check to make sure it was all the cases, but I don't know if it's generally. So in terms of the in terms of the interaction, right? so 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 one of the aspects of this bridge interaction model is that in every step there are many things that the user can do. That the user can uh, say things, the user can demonstrate uh, things. It would be good to have a, a flow chart which actually that says, look at if you're at this stage, then this sort of things you can do, if you're at this stage, this sort of things you can do that. In particular, one of the things that I like to get a better sense of is how prescribed is this interaction model? Uh, are, do I always have to go to the same sequence of steps in the right order? Does it matter what order I would go to various steps? Uh, There's some leeway. I mean, it's too, that state transition diagram is too complicated for me to Describe you verbally now, sure, sure. but um, but yeah, there's some leeway. Uh, what could happen is you could ignore a question, for example. But I don't do that now. I'm just making the canvas and then do some other example. Mm -hmm. Or Homer says, "I think I understand." You don't have to jump right into code generation. You say, "Ah, I think you're wrong. I'm going to give you a couple <laughs> more examples first. You know, 
Um, so there's a lot of, yeah, it's pretty dynamic. Yeah. That might be a good thing to add to the topic. Okay, if there are no more questions, let us thank Andrew once again. This is traditional, but we will meet in executive session, um, and uh, after which you are welcome to come and join us um, in our research area for refreshment.